Today, I wanted to do something I thought was original, but apparently it's not. Looking at the best player from every Overwatch League franchise, the only rule I had was not being able to choose the same player for multiple franchises, one specific player per team. And before we begin, anyone who says this is a ripoff of ATP's video, welcome to Ban World. We will start with Atlanta Reign, where I decided to put Stalker. There has been a lot of great players throughout the history of Atlanta Reign. You could put Pelican here due to his 2021 Rookie of the Year performances, even Hawk if you really wanted to. But even compared to them, I think Stalker had the largest impact this franchise has ever seen. He was undoubtedly the best tracer in 2023. During a season, she was hard meta for probably half the year, maybe a little bit more, having one of the most dominant stages in history. Also being Atlanta Reign's very first title win. Lip Stalker Sombra Tracer Dive was really a difference maker, allowing them to force this style so much. We didn't get to see as much flexibility with Stalker as we did with Pelican, but you also need to take into account 2021 was a year with hero pools, so the players didn't have a choice when specific things were banned for a stage. Of course, Stalker did play other heroes like Mei, Echo, and Genji, which were all great, but compared to his Tracer, they paled in comparison. Tracer is where he really shined. Anyone would be comfortable with having Stalker one-tricking that hero. One could actually argue in 2023, Stalker should have been the Atlanta Reigns MVP over Lip due to how impactful his Tracer was. The stats from him were just unbelievable. This single year is honestly enough for me to put him here. The best player for Boston Uprising is a really hard one. This franchise is worthless, like let's be real. Outside of 2018 and 2023, it was just complete garbage, waste of time to watch. I decided to rewind time and put Stryker from 2018 here. Stryker's career in of itself is one of the most absurd things anyone has ever seen, but his first year on Boston was genuinely good. Some could say Stryker was the best tracer in Overwatch League during this time period actually. Actually. He played a lot of it, going against Carpe, who was exceptional at Tracer at the time, Sabiobi, who was the other contender for best Tracer during 2018. I say fuck Sabiobi and put Striker as number one. People only ever talk about Striker on the shock, and rightfully so, but his name really started here. This Boston Uprising team was quite good, being the first ever team to have a perfect stage as well, which was even more impressive because this was during a dramatic time where their professional kid toucher got exposed, so big ups to mistakes especially for that, but Stryker was right next to him doing his work. Stryker himself must have realized how amazing this whole situation was because he returned back to Boston two more times after this, so congratulations to him. Chengdu Hunters is a very easy one. Leave is the only possible answer. Anyone who would say Among is a clear indicator you have not showered for multiple days at this point. Leave did absolute miracles with Tracer and same with Hanzo. Whenever he pulled out Hanzo, there was a 90% chance you would watch a farming session. This was also the season he showed the true flexibility, pulling out Hitscan from time to time, looking exceptional at literally everything, then most importantly winning MVP due to his performances. Thankfully, people started to learn how good he actually was and to this day is still considered one of the best, and a tie between himself and Gu Shui for the best Chinese player to ever do it. When it comes to the Dallas Fuel, a lot of people put Fearless here right away, then call it a day, which is the wrong answer. The correct one is Hanbin. Sure, Fearless was exceptional during 2021, then helped them win 2022 Overwatch League at the final hour. No one can doubt Korean Gushui's skill here, but if we look at Hanbin, in 2021, he was the second best off tank right behind Void from Shanghai Dragons. Then 2022, he was considered the most impactful tank during that season. For their run on Zarya during Kickoff Clash, whenever he needed to play Sigma, D.Va, Junker Queen, obviously, he dominated all of it. People seem to forget that Fearless kinda sucked in 2022 midseason the only time he played during that year, aside from the playoffs, obviously. Dallas ended that tournament 7th place, which is pathetic, to be frank. Whenever Hanbin played, though, the team overall looked way more coordinated. Viewers campaigned for Hanbin to win MVP, being behind Proper, of course, which, let's be real, Hanbin's not gonna win MVP over him. That doesn't take away from his performances, though. He was a fucking animal. Adding to this, Hanbin was the best player on the 2023 Dallas Fuel as well, towards the later half of that year when Hanbin could actually play his heroes. 
Dallas leveled up a shit ton and they turned that ship right around. Both Hanbin and Fearless were fantastic. Hanbin just edges it out for me. Florida Mayhem is a strange one. My mind immediately wanted to go to Yaki for his 2020 performances. But after thinking a bit more, I believe someone should acquire this spot for Florida Mayhem. Yaki was obviously a beast during the 2020 season. In 2021, he wasn't that great, which was quite unfortunate. But when it comes to someone in 2023, everything Florida Mayhem wanted to do during the 2023 season revolved around someone's ability to play every tank in the game and counter swap their opponents. This is what pushed the narrative of him winning MVP. He's not the best at anything, but so good at everything. Most called someone the best tank in the world for that reason alone. Own. For 5v5, any player who has a diverse hero pool to this degree makes creating strategies a lot easier to execute since it relies on only one player rather than switching that said person out. Due to how integral someone was for Florida Mayhem, he deserves this spot 100%. He was also really good in 2022 as well. I wouldn't say as valuable as 2023, but viewers were able to see someone had much more room to grow as a player going forward, which obviously ended up happening. When it comes to this abhorrent franchise, I wasn't entirely sure who to go with at first because outside of 2020, there weren't really any bright spots. But honestly, Choice One is a player that I'm sure most people feel terrible for. I remember when he joined in 2021, he seemed to be the only player on his team ever doing anything half the time. The teams he was on were really, really fucking bad. 2021 and 2022 Guangzhou were bottom of a pack, fucking garbage filth. Even with the struggling, we could see Choi Se-won's talent shining through somehow. In 2023, that was the first time Guangzhou looked good in quite a while. Seeing Choi on a team that actually looked functional was a nice change of pace. Then the org started to pack the bags halfway through the season once they found out Overwatch League would not be continuing after 2023, dropping Choi Se-won and Piggy. Right as he had a moment of fun, it was cut short. I feel really bad for Choi, so maybe Maybe this is a pity placement since this franchise also had Krong in 2020 who was really good. People used to say he was better than Hanbin. Shu and Happy were here as well, but Krong only had one good season. Then Shu and Happy I felt had their breakout years after they left Guangzhou. What a shocker. This is obviously not saying they are bad because you cannot win a stage with a group of shitters. I just wanted to give this to Choi because he was pulling out great performances on mostly bad teams. When it comes to Hangzhou Spark, it is very easy to pick the player that belongs in this spot, Gushui, and as you'll notice with other teams, there are franchise players who you can't really argue against. He joined back in 2019, where I actually forgot Hangzhou was good at GOATS. Gushui was an MVP candidate this season, which is wild to me. If you've ever seen him play Rhein in later seasons, you'll understand why this is baffling. This of course is not what he's known for though. Winston is one of the few unlocked heroes in Gushui's selection screen. The other being Doom, which he showed in 2023. Was not expecting him to be insane at that hero, but any hero that jumps is Gushui's wheelhouse, I guess. When it comes to Winston, there has been an eternal battle that will seemingly never end. Who is a better Winston, Gushui or Fearless? Both of them are leagues and leagues better than anyone else who's ever put their fingers on this hero. Maybe Smurf can be in that category too, but whenever Gushui was ready to play dive, you knew it would be good. We saw his stupendous expertise during the 2022 playoffs. I don't think anyone expected Hangzhou, who came in at bottom seed, to get fourth place. Then also in 2023, watching the dive mirror against Atlanta and Boston Uprising, getting the back-to-back -back reverse sweeps, again acquiring top four. Mechanically, Gushui is disgusting with Primal Rage and always has been. We saw this all the way back in World Cup when Primal Blade was born. He is a legend of the sport arguably the best Winston of all time, and undoubtedly Hangzhou Spark's best player in franchise history. Houston Outlaws is one of the most shit franchises Overwatch League ever saw. They only started getting good towards the later seasons, and I think the only person who deserves this spot is Dante, being stuck in jail for so many years, showing how he's clearly a better player than everyone else on multiple different rosters was truly a sight to behold. 2020 was the real breakout year, 
where most could see he does not belong on these Houston teams. They clearly weren't putting effort in or trying to build a thing someone could call a team. When they finally started creating real rosters, he fit into them seamlessly, that being 2021 and 2022. Being a top tier Echo and Tracer, even a more than solid tank player for Overwatch 2, looking the best on Doom and Zarya specifically. Unfortunately, Houston did not capitalize on the talent they had a lot earlier on, but at least it happened eventually. When it comes to LA Gladiators, Kevster is an easy pick for me. I don't see a real reason to stick anyone else here. In 2020, when he joined, this young sailor was on ping. He was still dominating. When he came over to the US in 2021, that's when the talent was truly exposed, especially on Tracer. That's his signature pick at this point. The straight carry performances Kevster had regularly was astonishing. This stemmed to every year afterwards. A lot of people have him as one of the best overall DPS players around since he was exceptional at every flex DPS hero while also being able to play hitscan at a reasonable level, essentially a white proper. But it seems Kevster has actually gotten utilized properly instead of forcing him to be the hitscan player. Kevster has typically been able to play the heroes he's best at throughout his tenure. He's acquired two role stars and did so much for the Gladiators roster overall. It's quite difficult to argue against having him here. The only other person you could argue is Shu. The Los Angeles Valiant is synonymous with a truck stop bathroom. After 2020, people started to lose a lot of respect for this organization due to many factors. Before the downfall, there were some talented players on here, but the best to me is definitely KSP, now known as Kai. An unexpectedly powerful DPS lineup, Shax and Kai were one of the best performing Ash Tracer lineups around. Kai was inhuman on Ash for most of the 2020 season, truly making a name for himself. Most most, if not all, the power resided within these two players popping off. In some cases, these two players were the reason they would get wins. I think the consistency of it was the most impressive part. Like when you have a player that's keeping up with Ons on Ash at times, it's going to do a lot for your team. Honestly, when it comes to the London Spitfire, it's a really difficult decision. There are two eras to look at, the original 2018 champion era and the European era. For today, I am leaning more towards the European era. One, because profit is used for another team, so putting him here goes against the rules. And two, the personality resonating from the 2022 and 2023 London Spitfire was honestly enjoyable to watch. Hadi can be considered the best from an entertainment standpoint undoubtedly, but this was not to say he was a bad player though. He was the centerpiece of making their characterized strategy work with the Ryan bullshit. Occasionally teams would mirror it and fail or just struggle against it. I don't think a single soul walking this earth ever expected the London Spitfire to make playoffs in 2022. If you just consider how bad Hadi was in 2021, then afterwards their season turnaround in 2023 was one of the biggest ones of all time. Hadi is a beast. NYXL was a fabled giant in the beginning of Overwatch League. Not many teams have been able to reach the levels of dominance they did in that season, where Jonak is still the easiest pick for them. The only support player to ever win MVP, Violet or Alarm are the only others who even came close to that. Jonak was just unreal in 2018, an actual turret just mowing everyone down having absurd damage statistics regularly. Granted, in the current days of Overwatch, having carry performances like this on Zen is not common, since people would just adapt and shut it down properly, or at the very least, prioritize ways to stop that shit. But in 2018, this was real life, him hovering around just killing everyone. NYXL tried their absolute hardest to make sure Jonat could stay up and carry the game, which is something not many people would even attempt. Clearly, it was worth it here, spearheading NYXL to four tournament finals appearances, winning two of them, then getting knocked out very early by Philadelphia Fusion in the playoffs. Big ups to Jonak. When it comes to Philadelphia Fusion, just like Profit, Fusion had their franchise player in Carpe, the longest tenure on one franchise, tied with Gushue, five years of this. 
there were a whole lot of second place acquisitions for Carpe and Fusion, but there were moments he was more than obviously their best player, like 2018 where he was in the top 3 MVP candidacy, and also most of 2020, Carpe was the front running MVP candidate for that season. Of course, more eyes got put on Alarm, and I think most considered him the best player on Fusion at the end of that year. It still doesn't take away how much impact Carpe had on a regular basis though. Anytime he played hitscan, you knew it would be good. During the earlier years, most people considered him the best hitscan in the world, and also the best tracer player on that roster, which did cause Philly to be in a pickle from time to time. You wanted him to play both tracer and hitscan, but you obviously can't do that unless we had the ability to clone him. It's just really sad he never won a single thing in Overwatch League. His depression is still ranked amongst the highest of anyone who has ever touched this game. At least in a more positive light, Carpe is renowned as one of the best to ever do it. He's won World Cup before, so he has at least something to his name. San Francisco Shock was a really hard one, honestly. A part of me wanted to put Violet, but after that five-figure Ajax shit, I'm not doing it and putting Proper instead. As Wings of Redemption said all those years ago, Look here! Look here! Look! Listen! Listen, Proper is honestly a legitimate choice of a player to stick here. Like, how many players have carried a roster this hard in their entire life? Not many. This lasted all season long. People hoped and hoped for Proper's downfall day by day because they were so tired of hearing his name. Unfortunately for them, it was real. His performances were demonic. Literally every hero he played, Tracer, Genji, Widow, Sojourn, whatever it was, Proper stole Kilo's job, who was originally Shock's hitscan player, looking to be one of the best sojourns around in 2022. That was truly an amazing year for him. Winning MVP, Rookie of the Year, and reaching Grand Finals with Mikey as his tank player. That is a feat not many souls can accomplish right there. Violet is obviously a good choice as well, but it's really hard to put him here when you see him beat in front of a fucking window and you know he's going to die. He knew he was going to die. He could have just sat around that corner, just waited, and he would have been perfectly fine. But for whatever reason, in his dumbass brain, he pressed that button and killed himself, lost that fight for his team. No way in fucking hell am I putting him in this spot. Soul Dynasty is yet another obvious one. After Prophet joined Soul in 2020, he became their franchise player, praised endlessly for his performances on Flex DPS and even Hitscan, bringing that out during 2020 Grand Finals, honestly looking pretty damn good at it. There are some corners who even call Prophet the actual greatest player of all time, which is hogwash at this point. Realistically, only Lip and unfortunately Violet can be argued over now. That's not even saying Prophet is bad since he was genuinely amazing for such a long time, essentially the backbone of Soul Dynasty until Overwatch League's end. Granted, 2023 was kinda shit from him, but at least Prophet had his 2022 as the last hoorah, helping Soul get their first ever stage win, acquiring Rollstar on his fifth season of competing, showing he still had it in him no matter how much time passed. Seeing someone able to win Rollstar after being around for so long is definitely impressive. When it comes to Shanghai Dragons, I just have one word, lip. Toronto is one of those franchises that barely had any talented players, never reaching any real success, being mid for so long. I guess Hisu is the only option. I remember when we were told he was going to be the franchise player, Toronto would be built around Hisu, which didn't last very long. Only two seasons of fun, 2021 and 2022. Where Hisu was obviously a great player, even on 2020 Fusion, he was really good, being your traditional hitscan player with a great Sombra. I don't think he ever transcended reality, becoming a player everyone and their cat will remember for eons, but he was able to showcase numerous highlights on Hanzo and Widow. Looking back, this could be one of the weakest franchises overall when it comes to talent. They of course had the one year with Hotba and Chorong Twilight backline, which was one of the best ones around actually, but if you look at all the other years, most of the players were just kind of bad or they left after one season, so you can't really gauge anything from it, which is pretty depressing. I have never seen a franchise so eyeing and pathetic at the same time. To me, the best player this franchise ever had was Janu from 2019, arguably the best diva from 2019 right next to Choi Hyobin. To me, he was actually better. He was in the final four of MVPs for this season, mainly due to this. Post Rolock, we got to see his talent stem to other heroes. When Janu picked up Sigma, he was immediately one of the best. 
This time, not better than Choi Hyobin, but still scratching behind him. This motherfucker is one of the most underrated players this game has ever seen, and it's very sad how his career went after this considering how top tier 2019 was, but that is a story for a different day. Initially, I was going to put Knife here for Vegas slash Paris Eternal. If you want to be a cheeky bastard and split Paris and Vegas, then sure, Knife wins that in 2023. You don't really have that many options on that shit stain. For Paris Eternal though, Sparkle is victorious 100%. Right when he joined this roster in 2020, his Summer Showdown performances created one of the most eye-opening moments on Genji anyone has ever seen. Sparkle hard carried his team to Who Are You levels during that stage mainly in the match against Shock to make finals. That's not to say he was a slouch in the finals because Sparkle was doing everything EQO was doing and more. He was just insane throughout the entire stage and seeing Paris Eternal beat the Fusion in the finals or even making the finals was a massive upset no one saw coming. Sparkle is the main contributor to that undoubtedly. Just a massive pickup for Paris Eternal that year and he did a lot to help him out. Washington Justice is one of the most fucking ass franchises of all time. I don't think a single person deserves this spot other than Decay. When he first joined in 2020 with the rule loophole hogwash, his Zarya performances were unreal, ruining three team seasons because of how well this roster played around it. Decay's presence just elevated them more. Moving to 2021, Decay was punished quite a bit for bending the rules, being on a very overhyped roster, where most of the time he seemed to be the only player who had any impact in matches. You could see the Overwatch equivalent of Sisyphus battling it out on Tracer, just for the rest of his team to watch and topple over. He finished out his final year on Justice in 2022, and his career overall was quite sad considering how talented he was at a multitude of heroes, but at the very least, his Justice days will be forever remembered. And with that, those are my picks for the best player for every Overwatch League franchise. If you have a list of your own, make sure to leave a comment of yours down below, which I'm sure there will be plenty of corrections for my picks, so yay me.